Hey, good morning everyone. Happy Sunday fun day, slack off Sunday, and all that jazz. It's not just that though. Today is March 14th. Happy Pie Day! Which reminds me, I gotta go cook some pie and eat it with someone who's very important to me. I can't go dress like this. Hey, it's me, the Amazing Fleck, and Happy Pie Day to you everybody. Now after doing some house chores for a couple hours, I find myself in my car driving on over to my family's house up north to celebrate Pi Day. Now what is Pi Day, you might ask? Well, Pi Day is March 14th, which references Pi the number. 3.14159265358979323846262643. And that's as far as I've gotten to remembering it. I think it's like 25 or 26 digits or something like that. The point is, is I can calculate the circumference of the planet Earth to a very, very high degree of accuracy on paper and without a calculator. I mean, if I ever needed to calculate something to that degree of accuracy, I'd probably use computers or a scientific calculator anyway. So then, because we're celebrating March 14th and the number pi, we're also celebrating it by eating pie. This is a tradition that goes back to I don't even know how long. Um, it might be more of a modern tradition for math enthusiasts and people who like pie in general, the number as well as the food. And I don't think you need very many reasons to eat pie. You know, you want to have special occasions, I feel. You don't want to be eating pie on a regular basis because that's just not good for you. But I enjoy pie very much. So today we'll be having some strawberry rhubarb pie and whatever else my little brother managed to get as well. But we're currently in a race against the clock because it's 2.37 right now and we want to get that pie out of the oven at 3.13 so we can take our first bites at 3.14. Now the pie should be warm, it shouldn't be hot because this is a pre-baked pie I'm bringing and we just want to warm it up in the oven. So one way or the other, we're gonna have our pie at 3.14 but I want to make sure that it's at maximum warmness for optimal enjoyment purposes. This is for the sake of science, folks providing us with the humble pie, the number and the food. So my interest in pie goes way back to when I was in elementary school, I think, yeah. I was at my relative's house for a family gathering. I think it was a Christmas party. And they had this book on their shelf called A Brief History of Pie by Peter Beckman. And I opened up the book because I was interested in mathematics at the time. I remember in my math classes in, in high school and middle school and elementary school, I would like to mess around with numbers and try to find out easier ways to do multiplication and division by looking at patterns. If I wrote down numbers and their multiples, I could look at different patterns or with addition and subtraction even too and try to find easier ways of doing mathematics. I didn't find anything too groundbreaking or crazy, but it was fun. It was, it was a hobby for me to, to work on something like that while I was in school and I felt like it was still school related too. So anyways, this book by Peter Beckman, I found to be very fascinating. It talked about the different ways that various societies and cultures and peoples of the past came up with developing the number pi. One of my favorite methods was how the Japanese figured out the number pi. They did it in a way that kind of resembles an actual pi that you eat. So they took a circle and they divided it up into not just six or eight or 12 or 16 pieces, but probably like hundreds of pieces. And then they took those pieces and they interlaid them up and down with each other to make something that looks kind of like a slightly slanted parallelogram. And then they measured the sides of the parallelogram, all four sides, and there's a little bit of variance because you get a slight curve with the edge of the pie as they moved it through. And that's how they discovered the area of the parallelogram and therefore the area of that circle that they broke into many different pieces. And through that, they found their own ratio, which was incredibly close to 3.14159265358979323846264433. And of course, the Egyptians and the Babylonians and various other cultures around the world had their methods of calculating pi, which were also equally interesting, but not nearly as interesting as I thought the method that the Japanese came across, which was really cool. Well, anyways, we're almost to our destination, and I should probably get off the camera right now while I'm driving. See you real soon. We've arrived at our destination. Here we are inside the kitchen, about to throw the pie in the oven, and we got some time for it to preheat and everything, so I'm gonna knock out some dishes. And here we are, we pulled the pie out just on time, a couple minutes before 3.14. And it looks and smells delicious. I made that pie from scratch, except I didn't at all. I bought it pre-made at a store. And now we're back at the Paisley couch without any sort of magical scene transition or any sort of, you know, smooth seg. But hey, here we are. We got some more pie right here to finish up eating. And of course, a little cup of coffee to go with it. 
So as I may or may not have stated earlier, my interest in pie started in probably middle school or elementary school with the reading of a book called Brief History of Pi by an author named Peter Beckman. Around the same time as my interest in the number as well as the book by Peter Beckman, a movie came out called Pi. This movie is a psychological thriller starring a character named Max who's this mathematician who's trying to unlock patterns in nature and a number of different people are interested in what his mind contains and what his research entails. There's some folks who are trying to unlock the secrets of the stock market, and there's some other people who are trying to unlock the secrets of God and the creation of everything. Anyways, it was a pretty interesting movie. It's a black and white psychological thriller from the 90s, and it features music by Clint Mansell as well as one of my favorite bands of all time, Massive Attack. Well, anyways, I'm gonna eat this pie and stuff my face. I don't want to be doing it in front of you. Strawberry rhubarb, very delicious. Thanks very much for stopping by, everyone. And I hope that you remember to keep safe, be well, stay humble as pie, and peace.